speed and still more speed. The breathtaking speed of the past is just poking along today. Faster trains, faster trucks and motor cars speed up the work and play of the world. Each increase in speed follows the winning of a skirmish with speed's greatest enemy, friction. And yet, strange as it might seem, speed is limited to our ability to stop. And stopping depends upon friction. What a paradox. Do away with friction for more speed, and yet for more speed, add friction. Whether you travel on a bicycle, a wagon, or the fastest planes, or cars, friction protects you. And your safety depends upon brakes, which apply friction for stopping. In modern busy traffic, on congested city streets, on the crowded highway, or in speeding along on the straight open stretches, the safety of men, women, and children depends upon brakes. No better example of dependable brakes can be found than those manufactured by the Chevrolet Motor Company. This is the Chevrolet wheel and brake. Notice how smoothly the wheel comes to a stop with the slightest pressure on the pedal and how quickly the wheel stops when a sharp pressure is applied. Before we can appreciate the degree of perfection Chevrolet has reached in its brakes, we must understand how friction is used, what its habits are, and what must be done to take full advantage of it. This is a motor car wheel. And to this wheel is fastened a brake drum, the part to which friction will be applied for stopping. Since friction produces heat, the material used for applying friction must resist heat. If it doesn't, it will smoke, char, burn, and quickly wear out. Chevrolet, with every available brake material to choose from, through exhaustive tests, has selected the very best for Chevrolet brakes. But, regardless of the quality of the material, the way this material is used is more important. For example, the amount of braking material in contact with the brake drum largely determines how long the material will last and how effective and safe the brakes are. Look at this. This motor car wheel is spinning and the brake drum turning with it. A short brake shoe covered with brake material will be used to stop this wheel. Now watch. See how hot the brake shoe gets? And how quickly the brake material is ground away? The brake shoe is lengthened. The brake shoe doesn't get so hot, and the brake material lasts longer. A still longer brake shoe, less heating, less wear. And now, almost half of the drum is covered with friction-producing brake material, and the wheel is brought to a stop with very little heat or wear. It is a simple matter to see that the effectiveness of brakes and their durability depend to a large extent upon the amount of braking material in contact with the revolving brake drum. And the amount of braking material in contact with the brake drum not only depends upon the length and number of the shoes, but upon the diameter and the width of the brake drum. Imagine a Chevrolet brake without articulated brake shoes. A brake which, from all outward appearances, applies plenty of brake material to the brake drum. But notice this. The ends of the brake shoes are fastened to fixed pivots. Watch as they move about these fixed points that the end of the shoe moves farther than the part nearer the pivot. As long as the surface of the brake forms a perfect circle, and as long as the pivot is located in exactly the right place, then all the brake material will contact the brake drum. But you can't use the brakes without making heat, and heat changes the shape of the brake shoe. See, this shoe doesn't fit the drum anymore. The rigid pivot won't let it, so only part of the brake material contacts the brake drum, and the part that does 
wears down first. When the brake shoe cools off, then here's what you get. Now only the ends of the brake shoes touch the drum, and only parts of the braking material are in contact with the drum. This is a Chevrolet wheel and its large brake drum, 12 inches in diameter. These are Chevrolet brake shoes. Notice how long they are, how much of the inside surface of the brake drum they cover. But even more important, notice how these shoes are supported. Instead of a single pivot for each shoe, each shoe swings on a link with two pivots each. Notice too that each shoe can move as it wants to and should within the circle of the brake drum. There is nothing to prevent each shoe from exactly fitting the brake drum, whether it's hot or cold. Now notice that this simple little piece, as it turns, spreads the outer ends of the shoes apart. As the brake operates, every square inch of braking material hugs the brake drum. Every square inch of braking material wears exactly the same. This is one of the reasons why Chevrolet brakes work so easily, so effectively, and they stay in adjustment over thousands and thousands of miles of the hardest driving through the heaviest traffic and through any kind of weather. Regardless of how well a brake is designed, its moving parts must be protected from water, slush, mud, dirt, sand, dust, and grit. If they aren't, they can't stand up. This is why Chevrolet protects the interior of its brakes with this close-fitting shield. And in addition, protects the bearing parts against rust by plating them with cadmium. With the inventive resources of experienced engineers in General Motors laboratories and the Chevrolet engineering department, Chevrolet has its choice of every available means for connecting brake pedals with brakes. After all, why should there be a problem in connecting four mechanical brakes with one foot-operated pedal? Simplicity is always a thing to be sought, particularly where safety is at stake. So Chevrolet, with four strong steel rods and four strong steel cables, through a strong, sturdy cross shaft and link, connected its four mechanical brakes, mechanically, with the foot-operated pedal. What could be simpler? What could be safer? A 300-pound man standing on a Chevrolet brake pedal could not even spring a single part in the entire brake system. And the reason is simple. The steel cables are of the same material used to lift heavy freight elevators, for operating steam shovels, and for supporting suspension bridges. In fact, here's an entire Chevrolet car hanging on just one of Chevrolet's brake control cables. Chevrolet's brake rods have a tensile strength of over 3,000 pounds, and the cross shaft and link is many times stronger than required. Is it any wonder that Chevrolet owners speed along without any thought of brakes? The heaviest of traffic doesn't phase them, for they know from experience that their cable-controlled, all-mechanical brakes are on the job every instant, ready for any emergency, at the slightest push on the foot pedal, smooth, safe brakes that stay in adjustment for thousands of miles of safe travel. And all of this due to Chevrolet engineers' knowledge of friction, the enemy of speed, and yet the friend of speed. <laughs>